Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. You may have watched my prior video, which was how to change the front shock on pretty much any modern Vespa. Well, today I'm gonna to show how to change out the rear shocks on a Vespa GTS 300. And if you have one of the smaller models, such as a Sprint Primavera, a Vespa ET4, uh, they just have one shock. Very similar steps, but you're just doing it with replacement of one shock absorber that's located on the left side, kind of right by the air box. Uh, with the pair of shocks on the larger frame Vespas, it kind of gives a little bit better stability for these larger scooters. So that's why they have a dual shock setup. Um, pretty much we're gonna replace the stock set shocks on this brand new Vespa GTS 300 HPE with a set of by two bows. And you may ask, what kind of advantages do you get by upgrading to a more expensive aftermarket shock as over setup. Well, first of all, you have much more range of preload adjustment, which is great if you're carrying a heavier load or maybe even want to drop the height of the scooter. These allow you to drop the height of a Vespa GTS up to about an inch and a half. Uh, it does affect the handling when you have a very low preload pre setting, but it may make the scooter just a little bit more comfortable for you if you're um, a little on the short side and just need every uh, inch you can out of the scooter. So that's an idea of why you'd wanna put these kind of shocks on there. They have a more sophisticated dampening system on there and they're also nitrogen pre-charge. So what does that mean? Is you pretty much have a diaphragm that pressurizes the hydraulic oil in the shock absorber and it prevents the oil from getting any air bubbles or foaming and causing poor shock absorber performance, especially when they're heavily loaded or on a very bumpy road. Uh, lastly, they use a more sophisticated set of valving on the shocks. This, the stock shocks on most Vespas have a pretty simple uh, valving system. Uh, these have a specific valving system with one-way flow on both a rebound and a compression. There isn't a compression adjustment on this set of by two bow shocks. These are available in the black edition. You can also get the Melosi rear shocks that do have a compression adjustment built in, or you can get the high end uh, by two bow with the piggyback reservoir that has adjustment as well. So in order to change the rear shocks, you do have to remove a little bit more. Just, uh, to, summarize, just to summarize it, uh, you want to remove these side skirts and if you have the newer HPE model, you need to loosen up the license frame and we'll go ahead and loosen the hardware, pull these side skirts off both sides of the frame. You're going to need to remove the muffler completely uh, unless you have an aftermarket muffler where you may have access to the shock. You're going to need to loosen the air box and lastly, remove this plastic cover that surrounds the seat latch and the gas cap. So I have plenty of other videos on disassembly of the bodywork on a Vespa GTS. Uh, you could search for them, you know, removing all the bodywork on Vespa GTS or for instance, the Sprint. It's a little bit different. You don't quite have to dismantle them as much, but pretty much any of those models that are smaller, you'll need to remove the, the cover, the black plastic cover on the rear near the gas tank fill and the air box on any of the single shock models. So you can see the upper shock shafts and the rubber buffers as well. And in order to remove this nut, if you just go on there with a socket, it's probably not gonna, it will just spin the shaft. So oftentimes if you don't have a power tool like an impact, you can grab this flat on the top of the shock shaft and then get a combination wrench underneath it. But we'll just kind of cheat and do it a little quicker and I'll use an impact wrench and zip just one side off. So 13 millimeter socket, and not much effort to zip that off. And if you're putting a new set of uh, stock shocks back in, I'd highly recommend replacing this locking washer. Part number 012534 is the replacement uh, locking washer. Alternatively, you can use Nordlock-M8 would be a higher end, higher quality lock washer. So you have a flat washer that pulls off, 
and next a smaller size rubber donut that will pull off the top of the shock shaft. So when you do this job, you just want to do one shock at a time. And again, we'll use an impact with a 13 millimeter socket. This is a nylon locking nut with 17 millimeter wrench. We'll grab it and you can go ahead and spin this off. And the idea is you still have the other shocks supporting the engine. Otherwise, if you pulled both shocks, the engine just drops and it won't be very stable on the center stand. So pull the bolt out, should pull up pretty easily, and then tip the shock and pull it straight out of the bodywork. So you can see the shock is slightly offset. So when you put a stock replacement shock, make sure the offset is towards the inside of the wheel. And then you also have these pair of spacers that some aftermarket shocks use. Sometimes they use their own spacers, depending on the aftermarket shock setup. And oftentimes you will reuse this rubber bushing. That's the larger one on your new shock setup. So with this bitubo setup, they have two different shock spacers that are slightly different between the two. So we'll go ahead and use the one with the larger spacer for the left side and then it also comes with its own uh, nut because the shock shaft is much larger on the bitubo suspension and leave this larger lower washer in place just go ahead and put the large rubber spacer onto the shaft and we'll go ahead and remove this clip here this retains the spacer setup that's included with the, sh the shock and at this point, we'll go ahead and thread the shock absorber right up through the frame. And we'll set up the spacers. And sometimes you'll find that you may not be able to compress the shock enough to get the bolt back in. Uh, two ways to go about it. You can loosen the other shock on the other side. So you can use a large screwdriver to kind of steer the shock bracket so you can get that bolt in just easily. So go ahead and just temporarily thread the, the nut onto the shock shaft. So we have the new shock shaft, which is much larger. You put the existing spacer in place, put the large flat washer and then you can thread the nut into place. And just like the front shocks, they do have an accommodation for an Allen. And you could start to, you could start it by just turning the Allen key. Keep in mind, if you put too much torque on this Allen, it will twist and may damage the top section of the shock. But for right now, we're just gonna get it right to the point where the nylon, uh, the lock nut is just touching the threads. Now we're gonna move on to the right side shock. So just like the left shock, pretty much the same steps. So a 17 millimeter socket, either on a ratchet or impact, go ahead and spin the lower shock mount off. and the spacer will go towards the right of the scooter and go ahead and remove this upper nut. Sometimes they have extra spacers that do need to stay in place. And at this point with it loose, shock will just pull right off. And you can kind of just twist it right off the mount. Go ahead and swap this rubber to the new shock. Go ahead and thread this up through doesn't really matter which way, but I'm gonna do it the same way where this uh, nitrogen charge hole is towards the front. Not really that critical. More important that you have the spacer on the right side. So go ahead and thread that through and you'll be able to lift the shock onto the, the shaft on the swing arm. Put the spacer there. and take the original 
washer and you could zap it right there. And then I would recommend using a hand tool or a torque wrench, about 30 foot pounds. So go ahead and drop the rubber spacer on there. Keep in mind there's that little metal uh, shim, the washer, and go ahead and hand start the nut. And at this point, you can use an impact. You gotta be very careful not to just go to town. And oftentimes when you're tightening something like this, you're more relying on the rubber squishing and when it's to the end limit. So I'll watch the socket as it's spinning. And it's not too much further. You know, you just don't get it too, too much further. You do want the nylon to be fully in contact with the threads. And you could double check that by putting a, a wrench on here. And definitely can get more turns on this because the impact just spins the shock shaft. So, and right there is all you need to do. You don't want to go any tighter than when the rubber pretty much uh, bottoms out. And with the stock shocks, if you're replacing it with stock shocks, you do want to, um, you can use a, like a, a small wrench or even a vice grip just to grab the top of the shock shaft. They're not quite as sophisticated as these aftermarket shocks that have a hex on the top or a square drive on the top of the shock to lock up the shaft. So don't forget your last fastener, which is your left lower shock. And again, you could do it 25, 30 foot pounds, which is rather tight with a 17 millimeter combination wrench. Put the air box back into place. Um, keep in mind, you may want to leave your air box loose for the first couple test rides to make fine adjustments to your preload. And with these aftermarket shocks, very much like the original shock, it uses a special tooth tool to spin the, the preload uh, nut on the threaded shaft of the shock body. So that pretty much sums up replacement of the rear shock absorbers on your modern Vespa. As you can see, it's a combination unit that both has the spring and the dampener all built into one thing, typically referred to as a coilover shock. Uh, Primavera's Sprints, LX, ZTs have a single shock or the 50cc models. You go up to large frame scooters such as the GTS 300, you have a double shock setup. All pretty similar in the techniques of how you do it. You do have to dismantle some of the bodywork as I shown in the first couple steps. Uh, as for tools, just basic tools, nothing special. It is very helpful to have an impact wrench, whether it's a uh, an air operated one or an electric battery powered one like I'm using in the video. Um, hope you found that useful. This is Robot here from Scooter West and Vespa Motorsport in San Diego, California. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and until next time.